Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Coffee and Conversation with myself and my husband. Listen, let's get ready to rock out. Make sure you like, you share all of that great stuff, and let's get ready to grow as we prepare for the Coffee and Conversation. Here we go. Let's grow. We're learning life, embracing love, managing marriage, maneuvering in ministry. And managing money. Welcome to the Let's Talk About It podcast. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hello, husband. Hey. So let's how get started. Doing? I'm good, sugar. Well, good morning, everybody. We want to come in this morning. I know my wife, she has to do her due diligence, uh, you know, like making sure she shared across all our different platforms. I want to say good morning to everybody. And I want to start with a quick prayer um, for you this morning. This is your Monday morning. Uh, many of us, many of y'all have joined us on our commanding your morning call, um, prayer call. And if you're interested in joining our commanding your Monday morning prayer call, uh, inbox us or whatever. But every Monday morning, we do a commanding your morning prayer call, and it's been powerful. But I'm going to do a quick prayer. Father, we come this morning saying thank you, Lord, um, for everything you've done for us, God. We want you to know we appreciate you, and we don't take anything you've done lightly, Lord. We ask you right now, God, to walk into this moment as we walk into any moment of education or learning experience. God, ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, open our minds, make us all receptive, God, even us as the ones leading this call. Make us receptive to your will, your way, Lord. And I pray, God, if anyone listens to this call, I pray, Lord, that it's a blessing to them and it changes their life. In your name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. So heavy, heavy, heavy. I know I'm doing a whole lot. So you have you talk. I got to get somebody else to do this. But Yeah. So but your I'm, mic changed. I think you changed your mic over. Your mic is, is I think it changed because I hear the whole echo in the room instead of just your mic in front of you. So I think you're on your actual computer mic right now. Okay. I'm not for sure. Okay, I sound better right there. You did something just then. But yeah, we're going to talk this morning. Listen, y'all, this is our coffee conversation. This is our platform um, that we try our best to do once a month. Every good morning, Ms. Ligans, we try to do this once a month. You know, and we, we don't take this lightly. This is our, you may see us in different areas, right? You may see us on Harden Enterprise. Um, you may see us on, uh, let's talk about it uh, with Tanya uh, Harden. Uh, you may see us in different ways, but every time we come, we come different. And on Harden Enterprise, we come with business. Well, let's talk about with Tanya. She's talking about life, marriage, uh, money, um, you know, a, a couple of different things. On here, we like to deal with things that's going to be really helpful for, you know, just spiritual development and growth and, and kind of being responsible spiritually, accountable spiritually. Um, and so one thing we're going to talk about this morning, um, we, me and my wife, we kind of brainstormed in this. We try our best not to be scripted. We try our best not to be um, choreographed. We try our best to, uh, you know, come with just some unique topics that we think that helps us. So we try to help you with it. And so this morning we prayed about it, prayed about it, and we settled on the topic this morning of the power of forgiveness. Yeah. The power of forgiveness. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and the reason why we want to talk about the power of forgiveness, I don't know if my wife got a banner. You got a banner with the power of forgiveness on it? Oh, uh. <laughs> I I'm, like, what? I'm, I'm waiting for a banner to come across the bottom of the power of forgiveness. Oh, my bad. No, I haven't got that for yet. <laughs> okay. I thought you, I'm so stupid. I thought you were talking about a banner. I'm like, what kind of banner? Okay. A I'm lower sorry. third. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to do the power of forgiveness. Listen, this one, um, this is why, right? Why do we want to talk about the power of forgiveness? This is Thanksgiving month. Uh, I never thought about this, baby. Why would you talk about power forgiveness? Because it's Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to have some dinner with some folks, and we need to make sure we we, we able to have dinner with folks. <laughs> right. That point. But not just that, right? Um, you know, we're about to enter into a new year. God has blessed us, and, and to be 2020, 2021, we've come a long ways, y'all. And now I think what has happened, we're starting to grow up, and we're starting to mature um, mentally. I think even, you know, it's not just about an age thing. It's just we really starting to realize what's important, what's valuable. And when you realize what's important, what's, what's valuable, you got to start realizing what's not important and what's not valuable. And maybe that thing that you're holding on to, that thing that you're, you haven't let go of, is kind of holding you back and not helping you grow. And so what we're going to deal with today, the power of forgiveness, um, when you deal with, with power, the, the ability, what, what, what does, when you deal with power, is what the uh, ability, what, what ability forgiveness can do. What's the authority, yeah. what strength does forgiveness have? It has the ability to do a lot. And so right. we don't want you going to 2025 
We don't want you to go into Thanksgiving dinner. We don't want you going to Christmas. We don't want you to go another step bound by the lack of forgiveness. You want to say anything with that, baby, before we get rolling? Yeah, into the topic? Uh, I think especially this time of year, you know, this is where you really, really learn. You really, really grow um, and really learn who you are when it comes to experience some type of pain. If you haven't experienced pain, I always say this. If we ain't feel like, if we together, we ain't fall out. <laughs> we had no issue. We had no problem. We ain't true friends. We ain't true family. Mm -mm. Right. And it's not until you have those moments of falling out with somebody. I dare you, all, all of you that are live, I dare you to put the number one on the screen. If you know, man, I didn't fill out with some folk that was in my family that, good morning, that was in my family that was, you know, just friends, whoever. But you guys have fallen out. But there's a time that you had to forgive and you had to move on and you had to grow together. And it was a pivotal point in your relationship with that particular person. And I think that's what happens. People don't think for some reason that you're going to have those moments with people where you're going to fall out with people and you're going to have to have a heart of forgiveness, regardless of how deep, how hurtful or how, um, how, what do you want to call it? Or how, much they significant do. yeah significant it was to you to where you want to make sure that you are you know you are growing and you are learning uh within the relationship so we definitely want to talk about the power of forgiveness man the power yeah. of forgiveness and it's, I'm, I'm telling you this is something that um you know i've dealt with um you know one thing about me as a pastor as a bishop and, and as a you know as a man um, I've dealt with some things in my life. My wife's like, babe, you can't talk about that. That's embarrassing. I'll do some pretty. And one day we're going to get the, the boldness. You think I'm going to come in here and talk about that one thing I dealt with and, and share with them across coffee, coffee and conversation? Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, There's one thing about me. I have no shame in my game, man, because no. what I believe is if I overcame it and it didn't take me out, but it almost did, how many other people out there who over, who's dealing with it and had to overcome it? True. And I want to save them from being taken out. So um, I, I share some things with them. I, I think one day you will, like years from now, you will be able know. to I share. Think I'm thinking 2025. I know. I know I have some some stuff, uh, whew, baby, when it comes to um, things that have happened. I wrote it in my book. A lot of my stuff I wrote in my book. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been hurt as a, as a, you know, as a daughter. I've experienced, you know, trying to forgive as a sister trying to forgive as a mother, as a wife, you know, in every area, there has been a place of forgiveness that has had to take place as a pastor's wife. Oh my God. Now that's a whole nother level of forgiving that I had to do. Even as a bishop's wife, come yeah. here, even as a bishop's wife, because you know, there are pastors that put you through stuff too. And so it's even as that part. So yeah, I, I believe that that's a pivotal point, but it's the power of forgiveness that allows you to get there and what that looks like. And I think for us, if anyone that knows us and you rocked out with us and you fell out with us and we didn't feel back in love together, you understand the power of forgiveness. Why do we forgive? I, I believe this is one of the reasons why I'm learning. I had to learn to let go and forgive is because of my leaders, yeah. my, my spiritual covering. Uh, Bishop and Lady Woodard, shout out. Can y'all give it hearts up for our spiritual leaders? Bishop and Lady Gail Woodard in Houston, Texas. Uh, they forgive like my other. hand clap. I have no hand clap. Hand cla you got a hand clap, Bishop? <laughs> I don't have one. And I want to <laughs> I want to share a quick story about forgiveness because I never forget um, my bishop, you know, and, that's, and I think it's why it's so easy for me to forgive. My bishop one time, and I want to get into the topic. And I do because listen, I'm telling you here, my, my, a little bit disclaimer. Now, hang on here. Don't 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 jump off this one. This is that one you need to secretly take your hair and throw over your AirPod while you're at your desk. Yeah. You want to, you know, because you don't want to leave this one. I promise you, this is one you don't want to listen to later. Um, some things is better um, off the hot pot. You know, one thing I hate, I hate going out to, to restaurants and getting food and bring it back home and eating it cold and warming it up. You don't want to warm this one up. You want to get this on hot pot. So whatever you got to do to get the ears to cover it up and, and still listen, but still focus on work, we want to hang out here. But I know my, my bishop forgave me one time. God has showed him something spiritually that was true. God showed us some spirit that was true. We had let um, people come into our home and, and come against him. And he was preaching. I'll never forget it. And he stopped. And he said, whoa, someone in this church have let someone come into your home and put their mouth against me. This was years ago. And I'm yeah. way mature than that. And, yeah. um, come on here, and so he uh, 
and he didn't know it was me. I think he knew it was me. He knew it was me. Um, and I didn't know if he knew it was me. But then I got so convicted to after church, I went to him. I said, Bishop, it was me. I let someone come to my home. And and, and if some things happen, long story, if you've been around us long enough, you know the story. And um, and he grabbed me and he hugged me. He says, okay, son, I forgive you. I, I love you. I, I feel like that song, uh, that's love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose, he rose again. again. That it's something when somebody can love you after you have wrong. Oh, type this in the screen. It's something not that much. That's too much. <laughs> type this in the screen when love overcomes your failures. Yeah, love overcomes. If you can just type it, type it. If you can't, yeah. can't just type when it. Love because overcomes love overcomes your failure. Your failure. Like you, when you make a mistake and somebody can still love you, uh, somebody can still, you know, that's love, man. And listen, I want you to type this one. I got a little long one, long one I want you to type too, because this is what God's put in my heart and I got to share it with you, but I want somebody to type it. Unforgiveness is a weapon of the enemy. Ah, oh, come on. Unforgiveness is a weapon of the enemy. God Ooh, dealt with me the other wait, day. wait a minute, sir. That was good. Unforgiveness is the weapon of an enemy of the enemy come of on the enemy. and i got dealt with on that man so you walk around here and you got all this hurt on you and you don't realize that the devil's excited about it because it's hindering the other person and you so if you unforgive oh, them they unforgive them all of a sudden the more you collect unforgiveness it's putting you into into solitary confinement and hurt people hurt people so watch this Hurt people, hurt people. So you're already injured and you keep injuring other people, don't realizing you're the cause. And now you're collecting more people and you end up in a solitary confinement. And I told someone the other day, the worst, the worst thing in the world is not death. The worst thing in the world is being alone. And the devil can have you alone. He's controlled everything. Right. If he can and, isolate you. And so if the greatest is, if, if, if the unforgiveness is a, a, a weapon of the enemy. Forgiveness is the power of the spirit. Come on. If you can forgive, now you break in chains. Come on. There's some people right now who don't like Annie's because grandmama didn't like them. What you say? And it's generational restraints are happening in the whole entire family. Oh, can I say this? There are some people that don't like people because the other person don't like them and what they're doing and don't realize. And I've said this for years is that we allow ourselves to see that person through that person's eyes versus through our own eyes. You know, yes. forgiveness break change. Yes, it does. Jesus on the main line. We allow ourselves and I've done it. I've done it. I've been that person because I'm a rider. You know, I'm a baby. I'm gonna ride with you, and you got a problem. We got a problem. Yep. And this is what I learned is that until you see that person for yourself, until you didn't spend time with that person, forty eight hours with that person, you don't really know them like that. And I'm most of the time, our unforgiveness is because of what we heard somebody else say, mm -hmm. or what we heard somebody else, somebody else experience with that person, and that's not even your experience. So let's do a litmus test. How do you know if you have un if you have unforgiveness in your heart? I'm gonna give you a litmus test. My wife has a saying she said uh, years ago, and it, it, it used to be so true for for me, and and I'm trying to get back there now. And my wife said, "I don't have any enemies. I don't have any enemies." What she's saying is that I don't have anyone I have a problem with where I cannot be around them. That part today. And and but that I'll didn't mean that they they that she wasn't someone's enemy. Right. There were some people maybe that didn't want to be around her, but she didn't have anybody that she had a problem being around. Come on. And and I used to say the same thing. I had no enemies. I had no enemies. And then over the last you know couple of years, I began collecting um, people who I felt uncomfortable around. Mm -hmm. That means I had unforgiveness in my heart. Mm -hmm. I, that I, I I haven't forgiven them. I had uh, no. I needed some forgiveness to get. Oh, yeah, I had unforgiveness in my heart. So my litmus test to you is there rooms you're uncomfortable moving around how do you handle forgiving someone and not waiting not wanting them to have access to you but they don't understand that i, I want to hold up we'll keep that one we'll come back to that one because we're going to talk about that one and, yeah. and if you got the question bring them in that's already yeah, good i love it in. i'm gonna talk about it yeah yeah and i hope that we can answer that question but listen you know if you have unforgiveness in your heart if you have a problem moving in rooms
Woo! You have a problem. Woo! Hold up. <laughs> you know you have a, when you have. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. That was good to me. Y'all, can somebody hold it up if that was good? Put the number two on the screen if that was good to you. Say that one more game, one more time. Sir. So you, you know you have unforgiveness in your heart if you have a problem moving in rooms. With if you have person. problem moving with people, with people, if, if, if mm -hmm. and if you say, man, you know what? Um, I'm going to avoid that area because I don't want to be around hey, 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 sweetheart. Give oh, me a virtual hug. Baby. I know. I let know, the baby man. be married. I miss you so much, sweetheart. You got to come give us a hug, you and your husband. Yes. Well, listen, you have a, if you say, I'm going to avoid that store because they may be in there. Come I'm going to avoid that side of town because they may be over there. I'm, I'm going to avoid going to church at that church. Oh, we're going to go visit that church? Oh, I'm not going to that church. Right. I'll I, mm -hmm. I, I catch y'all next Sunday. You know when there's a problem. I always say that. If you know that you, and that's why I've always been comfortable to say, I don't have no problem with nobody. You know, I don't, I don't have no enemies. And if I do, they're my, they, I'm, I don't know how to put it, whatever you said earlier, no. <laughs> but I, I don't because I don't mind being in the room with you because here's the thing. I know my hands are clean. Yeah. Come here. Why do I know my hands? Because I do everything in my power to not, and I'm not saying I've been perfect with this. I had to learn this because God had to teach me how to be forgiving because I'm a little petty. You know, yeah. I have a little petty spirit. And so the Lord had to deal with me for a couple of years, even being a pastor's wife, the Lord had to deal with me because I walked in unforgiveness for so long. And that crap was making me sick. And it's listen, uncomfortable. And most of the time we when we have unforgiveness in us, it's truly a sign, usually, watch this, of, of selfishness. Oh. The only re listen, this, uh, if you hurt your feelings, just, just hang in there with me. Don't jump yeah. off just yet. It's usually a sign of selfishness because we expected something that you didn't deliver on. Mm. Or we expected you not to do something, but you did anyways. And basically there's a violation of self. We're going to deal with that. I'm going to go a little deeper. I'm not trying to go all the way in, but there's a violation of self. And so, and listen, and listen, watch this. We are violated because of who you are. And this mm -hmm. is my biggest problem. I had to realize I put an expectation on folk that they didn't know I had on them. Come here today. And when they didn't meet my expectation, it hurt me to the point to why I didn't want to be around them. Church members, I, we, we lost church members. I put an expectation on church members that y'all gonna be here, y'all gonna do this, y'all gonna do this, y'all gonna do that, and 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 y'all won't hurt me. Y'all won't watch this. I put expectations you won't hurt me. Who said I won't hurt you? Yeah. Even though I didn't do it intentionally, but you expected me to be inhumane because human hurt humans all the time. Yeah. If I put this unrealistic yeah. bubble around me. And listen, there are some there are some legit attacks and violations we're gonna deal with. Right. But I thought this unrealistic bubble around me that oh she ain't me we cool we listen we have been friends since school she'll never do that or he'll never do that and if I violate that and 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 unintentionally now you upset me because you put an unrealistic expectation on me. Go ahead, baby. You got something. And then, then the thing is, is that and we forget the scripture where the Bible says trust no man. And we, we forget that scripture. And here's the thing is that even for me, you know, as a little kid, the stuff that happened, you know what I'm saying? It's like those type of things. It's those things that we don't deal with um, that allows us to walk in even more unforgiveness because of the things as children, you know, through your mother, through your father, through whomever. I, I, I was writing my book the other day and just went to crying because I'm sharing some intimate stuff that I didn't even realize was an issue or was a problem within me. I've grown from it, but still, it's still there. It resonates there. It sits there. And I had to ask myself, do I really, uh, do, am I really walking forgiveness towards this person that caused me something as a kid? Like, am I really, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I think yes, we yes. don't take the time to pause. And I'm so glad we're doing this because we don't take the time to pause to see who do you have fault with? Who do you have issues with? Who you who do you have problems with? Who have you not told the announcement of your shift, of your changes? It is learning that part of it. And God, even when it. they don't, even when they announced the shift to you, you decided to walk in unforgiveness when you knew 
that this was the this was a part of the plan. Period. They announced it to you. Watch this. Usually, if 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 someone um, have an unrealistic expectation of me, it don't give me room for growth or grace. That's because good. right now, my daughter is gonna move, and and she's gonna move out of home. If I had an expectation that she'd be here forever, it may hurt me that she left me, but I didn't give her room to grow and grace to grow. And See, I'm not ready to home. talk about that yet. I'm not <laughs> here. I'm gonna need a little more time for that one. And sometimes people say, "Well, you left me. You moved on. You you left me behind." And you may be angry. You 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 actually watch this. You said the truth about me to someone else. Wait a minute. Let's what talk. Let's talk. Wait, what'd you say, sir? Think about this. Grace to grow. We got to get people grace to grow. Somebody type that. Grace to grow. Grace to grow. We got to get people grace, grace to grow. And so if someone said the truth about me to someone else, and we found out later, and we angry with them, they may need a grace to grow to talk to someone else about you. Because maybe you hurt them. But I don't, you don't agree. To expand. Well, yeah, hold up. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why I agree. If, okay. If, if 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 you hurt me, and it's different. It's, it's all about how you do it. But if, if you was my best friend, okay. And we were talking to each other about everything. Mm-hmm. And, and now you hurt me. But I couldn't talk to you about it. I need to grow and and have grace to grow, and share my feelings with someone else who can help me deal with you. But okay, okay, I got a pushback. I'm sorry. I don't because I'm I, I feel like this. If we're riding together and we friends and we say that we friends, and I find out that what some you went and told somebody something, that's different. It's no, different no, wait, messy. wait, bitch. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, wait. <laughs> Listen, if I find out that you went and you told someone and they went and started talking. My bit, y'all tell me. I, I need I just put a heart on no, no, no. But, it, it, but I'm not done. Wait, let me finish. Hold up, because this uh, it's different with women. Because if I'm your friend and we rocking out together, and I may be wrong, okay, I'm your friend and we rocking out together, and I find out through somebody else that you went to somebody else and talked about me, and this particular person that you went to to talk about me was not a trustworthy person. Or not a person of wisdom, not a person that would have kept it, but they went and talked all our business. Baby, we got a problem. We got a problem because I'm going to need you to trust me. If I'm your girl or I'm your friend, I'm whoever you say I am, and we rocking out together, you should know me well enough to know I'm going to need you to go to somebody that almost to a counselor to talk about me where they can't say nothing about me because unrealistic expectations. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Now think about it, grace to grow. Even sometimes grace to grow is grace to make a mistake so I can grow. Maybe I thought I could trust them. Maybe I <laughs> thought I could. Maybe I was in a moment of I was I was hurt, and especially a female, because female, like, they get emotional. And I'm like, man, I need to share something with you. And I don't know if I can share anyone else, but man. I get this I, again. Let me, I, I, let me, let me finish, because I let you finish. But listen, <laughs> but Lady T, the reality is everybody's not there. Uh, <laughs> Everybody not there. Okay. Because I want this person because I was trying. You got to give me grace. I was just about to say right. they need to talk to a not therapist. Not another not, friend. I totally not, agree. Not, hold up. Not everybody got therapists. Not everybody got the understanding that I can go to a therapist. I'm not going to another friend. I'm going to a but person. I'm not just listen, saying a therapist, though, husband. Listen, but let me finish. You cut me off. You okay. self Muslim. But listen, this I mean grace to grow. Grace to grow is saying I give you grace to make a mistake and learn from it. Mm-mm. It was a, Maybe it was a mistake. See, that's where... We, See, uh, I know. Uh, uh, no, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because I don't know. Maybe this is unrealistic. Whatever. But I feel like this. You know, my, my best friend know everything about me, and so it maybe not, it wasn't not the best everything. friend. Maybe it wasn't the best friend. Maybe it was a person who just didn't understand. I what... like this dialogue though. But listen, because what happened is, first of all, we use a best friend as a prison. Uh as a prison Ooh. don't play don't play with that word and, and imprison me to your relationship because you want to entitle me to something that i may not be ready to entitle myself to grace to grow because maybe we're not best friends no more maybe we was childhood friends and i'm adult friend and the prison of your friendship injured me i had to share with someone 
unfortunate person violated my relationship and shared it with someone else. But you, if you want to keep yourself in prison, you will continue saying, well, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. We all need to say, you know what? Maybe I had an unrealistic expectation. I'm talking about my mama. I had an unrealistic expectation of my mama. I had an unrealistic, racist, uh, unrealistic expectation of my father. I had an unrealistic expectation on, on the church members. I had an unrealistic expectation on you. But we all, when people make a mistake, what, write this down, y'all. We, if we want to really grow, we got to give people grace to make a mistake and grace to grow. If we don't, we're asking for unrealistic perfection. Also, once people show you who they are, believe them. Don't mistreat them, but understand where they are right now and deal accordingly. And that is grace to grow. Because what happened is when we are when we are walking in forgiveness, that means my wife taught me this. That's why I'm so disappointed in her. Uh, you don't be disappointed. I'm disappointed. My wife no, told don't me be this disappointed day. because <laughs> I still, I still, I, you know, I may be, I, I still say this is that you're talking about this on a personal place. But let me say this first. So then you're gonna say this here. You you understand what I'm gonna say. Okay. We got to start untying people instead of cutting them off. So you're going to throw my words back at me? I am. I am. So you're going to throw your, okay, you're going to throw See, my we, words back at me. We, okay. we don't, we don't forgive folks. What we did, we tied, I'm tied to you. I'm tied to you. I'm tied to you. But see, I'm not saying don't forgive well, husband. That's what we do. Husband, if we don't. Listen, listen husband, husband I, I'm not saying don't forgive. I'm saying forgive, but what I'm no, saying. No, you're saying, you saying get in the place of where I have to forgive you. No, I'm husband, that's you. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's a violation. When you, when we got to the conversation of someone being close to you and someone crossing you wrong, there is a violation of friend girlfriend code. There's a violation of not just girlfriend code, but there's also a violation of, let's say one of my friends, my best friend, she ended up talking to you. That's a, that's a violation. Like, yeah, let me I be, I, I, wait, I'm, let me be dead and gone, and I'm out of here. And my friend end up being with you. I'm a hunt y'all because that's a violation. <laughs> but listen, that's a violation. Is, I agree. No, I agree with that. But listen, but what I'm trying to say is this: this year. That's all I'm saying, though, babe. I'm just saying there's a violation. But let me let me give you an example. And y'all, y'all really this, getting the heart of heart, <laughs> them heart talking. Okay. This this is why I say coffee and conversation. Let me give you an example, right? So let's say, for instance, um, let me use a person that that is real. Let's say, for instance, that um. Let's say, for instance, that I'm I'm gonna say Isha. Isha's real. Can you say this is good? I know <laughs> we're going back and forth because maybe I'm not in agreement. Let me say Isha, Isha's real, right? Isha's real, and and this is a real person. Isha's my wife, my wife, childhood friend, best friend. Let's say you did something to hurt you. Did something to hurt Isha, and and she didn't know how to come to you, come on. and and maybe you you uh you, you did something unintentionally uh, on one of your live videos. And okay. you said something about, man, my best friend, you know, and right now that other you said something online and okay. you heard her and you didn't know you heard her. it was unintentional. OK, it was accident. And then she went to someone like, man, I, I got to help. So I got I got to figure out how to do this. And she went to, let's say, um, I think that's why she could have went to. Let's say she went exactly. to exactly. anybody. She went no, to because no, she ain't going to do that. Hold on a second. Say she went to Charlotte. Charlotte, See, person. Don't tell nobody. Oh, no, 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 listen. Okay, she went to Charlotte. Ahead. I said, Charlotte, man, I, I need help. I, I, I said, try to find somebody who could really help me out on this because um, I'm, Tanya, she says I'm alive. I know she was talking about me. And it really hurt me. How do I deal with that? Mm -hmm. And and just so happened, she didn't know that Charlotte had a friend in the background. She was on the phone with Charlotte. Charlotte okay, Charlotte. you make me sick. Okay, come on. <laughs> let's get to the points. And so, I, okay, I get it. Room. To grow, to grow. Room grace to, grow. to make mistakes. Okay, y'all type in the screen, screen, <laughs> grace to grow. Okay, it took me a minute. Look, Tanya, it took me a minute. Look, she, wait a minute. Well, let me see this. I think, I the, think difference the difference is in what y'all are discussing is the person's intention. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Miss Tanya. Okay, now, different say, girl, get Tanya, da, da, da. it's not that. So, but listen, the, even if in this, I, I'm glad you said that, Miss Tanya, because this is where is that this is where maturity comes in. We're gonna, we're gonna have a real okay. discussion. I but just this grew what, up just that moment. I, but this, this is what we got to stop doing, right? The devil wants us to have these unrealistic. This is the most important part. This is the most important part. The devil wants us to have unrealistic expectations because that's how we create this fake world. That's good. 
we create this fake world of I expect my children to do this. I expect my husband to do this. I expect my wife to do this. I expect the church to do this. I expect, and you give all these rules that no one signed a contract on. Come on, husband. Okay. I did it. I got all this stuff and bet not nobody violated. And folks start walking around you on, on eggshells. That's good, basically. And they don't even want that relationship with you because, man, you're so, you're so uh, petty. You're so uh, uh, finicky and, and crap. And we all, man, you better, because you, and listen, and we create this this comical world, this this uh, animated world, and no one has room to make a mistake. And the moment anyone cross you, you use words like, I, I'm I'm loyal. And I yeah. would never violate you. I'm, uh, and listen, I would never do that to you. What happened, we, we infringe our debt on everyone else like i'm gonna be loyal to you i'm gonna be loyal and we create this world of what we call loyal right and we didn't even take in consideration what they call loyal that's good and and, and this is huge and anything i do gonna violate my relationship with you because you have this unrealistic expectation on everybody i did it and we collect okay. this this is this fake expectation from social media we collect this unrealistic expectation from tv we collect this unrealistic expectation from you know friends opinions and, and we was told that this is it Come on. and no one have room to make mistakes around you so listen we gotta have give people grace to make mistakes even watch this even our parents because our parents are who they are and be uh -huh. been who they are before yeah. you came became who you are so how are we gonna put and this is my problem i ain't saying to say it how are we gonna put our new expectation on old people. Even the Bible said you can't put new wine in old wine skin. Come on, husband. So we didn't grow up now and we didn't found out there's different. Then we turn around and say, why can't you be this? They was who they are when they gave birth to you. Now you want them to change. And now you're hurt because I'm expecting something from you that they, listen, you, could, you can't choose two things. You can't choose your name and your parents. Of course. Or your gender. Or your gender. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, stop, Clyde. Go back. You okay. can't choose your name and your parents. Right. And and since you can't choose your name, your, your name, your parents, you can watch this. <laughs> Embrace who they are to you and then embrace who you become. But who they are for you was a launching pad to who you become. This is true. Don't don't become judgmental of who you were because who you becoming. That makes sense. That makes sense. So what is what I want to do with today? I want to talk about real fast is that we got to give people grace to grow, grace to make mistakes, and then I ask add another one: grace to be who they are in spite of who you want them to be. So instead of creating this bubble of people and what they thought think they should be, we should do a census of our environment. Watch this, Tanya. Y'all still hear me? We should do a census of our environment. Instead of trying to make everyone be who they are, find out who they are and only expect them to be what they already told you they are. All right. That makes sense, my love? I feel yeah. like I, you tapped out on me. <laughs> no, I ain't tapped out. No, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I just know with unforgive uh with unforgiveness, uh, yeah, it's a lot that goes with it. A lot. It's a lot that goes with it. And I think here's the thing for me is uh, for me when it comes to unforgiveness is that learning. Uh, and I think the thing I shared years ago is that I read a scripture and that scripture was talking about how God would throw your, your sins in the sea of forgiveness into the sea of forgiveness. And that part got me because I'm all I could think about a sea. And I think we was on the boat at the time and being out there on that boat <laughs> on a cruise. I'm just like, baby, that sea is deep because if is. this boat go down. They're going to forget about us. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like one of those that it, it was like, dang, God, you threw my sins in the sea of forgiveness. And there, the sea is bottomless. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you threw it there to never return again. And I had to start the journey of forgiving. And I I believe, and I wrote a book with the ladies called There's a Real Heal You, because in order to get healed for real, you got to be willing to let some things go. You got to be willing to um, get to a point to where what one of the points we're talking about today is number one. And I'm going to get into that. One of those points is that stop collecting debt. Type that in the screen. Our first point that we're talking about today is stop collecting debt. Uh, of people owe you and Bishop said it right like people owe you and when we stop collecting debt of what people owe us like you owe me something because of it you know what I'm saying now I'm I'm still going to stand beside <laughs> I don't care what nobody say I'm still going to stand beside knowing that there's a violation of different things but even when you violate me as Tanya said earlier is that you just show me who you are Yeah, and I'm the type of person once you show me who you are. I can forgive and keep moving. And we can we can mend. I've had multiple relationships where we mended mm-hmm. because of your violation. But at the same time, baby, I'm watching yeah. and praying yeah. at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? But I yeah. understand too that I had to learn not to even watch and pray because my watching and praying is me worried about what you're going to do next. Exactly. But that is not my job to do. That is not my job to do. And so I guess because I didn't have friendships for years, years, but I've had the violation that has happened with some friendships, but it's also learning that I can't collect debt. I can't collect debt. I can't, I can't worry about if we are, if I'm going to forgive you, I got to forgive you and move on. And that's the thing for me is that I had to learn that like Tanya, they don't owe you nothing. At, all. at the end of the day, did you forgive and did you move on? Yeah. Let it be known. Like at the I I forgave you for everything you done. You mean to tell me you can't let go? And that's the thing that we have to learn to do is not collect debt. And like, I'm gonna add this in there. I wonder if we on to unforgive because we feel the person has not paid the cost for our pain. Ooh-hoo-hoo! That's it. That yeah. that's that's the part about collecting debt. I'm waiting for you to that's hurt good. like you hurt me. I'm waiting on you to hurt like you hurt me. And that's the and I almost part. wait for the Lord to do something. Like, Lord, what you gonna do? That now exactly. that used to be me. Like, God, now you ate me up for my wrong. You gotta eat them up. And I tell the people in my church, Tanya, I tell them this. I say, This is what I learned to do, right? I used to wait and see what the Lord was gonna do, and then I stopped waiting because here's the thing that I found out about God. God, everybody, the Bible says you reap what you sow, period. That's that's scripture, period. That is scripture. <laughs> Somebody say that part. That is scripture. You reap what you sow, right? So this is what I found out and I share with the women in my church. I share this. I learned this, that if I continue to wait and wait for God to get you for what you did to me, I'm going to find myself in a place of stagnation. Come here. I'm like, Who am I'm I like talking Jonah. To? It's like, I'm going I'm to become like Jonah in the well to where I'm going to be so stagnated and I can't move in purpose. And that's why I found myself telling you, I found myself there for those of you that said that part, right? Yep. Baby, you find yourself sitting there waiting on Lord. Like you almost like, come on, get Judas. What, what you going to do? You got to get Judas because you got him before. And you find out that God don't do it on your timing. He does it on his own. Cause he will just like he got you us. He will in his own timing. And you won't even be able to see it. And you won't even be joyful when it happens. You almost have a heart of, oh my God, because here's the thing. But this is the thing I found out, man. It's not until God hits your house that you do not sit back and laugh and wallow in another person's misery. When God didn't hit you so hard and life has happened so hard, hear me in the Holy Ghost. If you're sitting there, and you're waiting for God to get them, I come to tell you, I serve you notice, your time will come and you're going to wish that I did not wait for you to get that. I did not because God, them, your people, they belong to you. And it's almost like you have a heart of empathy and sympathy for that person because you know what it is to feel like you at rock bottom. You know what it is to feel like you done lost everything. You know what it is when the enemy comes after your children. And you know what it is when the enemy comes after your marriage. You know what it feels like. And you don't want nobody else to go through that hell that you've been through. So it makes you look at it a little different. 
It makes you look at it a little different. So for me, when God started hitting my house, Lord, protect the others. Because, chilly, chilly, bang, bang. We've had somebody violate us so bad, and we literally said, oh, my God. And we immediately stopped and started praying for them. Yes. We knew the cost that what they did to us. We said, man, God, please open their eyes quick so they won't go through what we know we is attached to that. We know what it is, man. Like Bishop said earlier, to come against our leader. Man, yeah. we, we what he didn't tell you is that we came against our, and this ain't about no voodoo hoodoo crap. The Bible says, touch, the Bible says, touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. And when we came against, when my husband came against, well, we both did it. I just we allowed somebody to go against us. We didn't go against, we allowed somebody to do in our house. We allowed somebody, man. And when I tell you, acting, everything started going out because God said, look at here, you have no right. This man ain't done nothing to y'all. That's it. And you have the audacity after what I put in his mouth that has brought you out of bondage, that have brought you out of prison, that have brought, and you have the audacity, baby, please, you, when I, baby, soon as I find out, I go into prayer because I understand what comes with that. Yep, yep, I understand yep. when you put your mouth, the Bible says, touch, not just touch, but the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And here's the kicker. Come here, Tanya, this the kicker. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. That's for everybody on this line. Every tongue that rises, as long as you keep your mouth closed, as long as you're quiet, as long as you're trusting God, as long as you're not talking about that person and you're not dragging their name through the mud, God will fight for you. That's it. You don't have to wait for him to fight. And uh, half of the time you be like, Lord, protect them. Don't 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 do what you did to us because baby, that don't feel good. But watch this. If you don't forgive them, that means you taking that in your hands versus letting God do it. Come on. That means you saying, God, I want to hurt them. I want to hold them bondage. God said, Well, as long as you do it, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. But as soon as you when forgive vengeance them, is mine, it's mine. Yep. And here's the thing: I'm gonna protect them while I'm doing vengeance. And God don't need no tag team partner. God don't need no tag team partner. He don't need you to get them and then he get them. God said, you already done it. I'm going to walk away down. You need to let go and let God and say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. Good I started morning, getting MD. blessed I'm when God blessed gave me the spirit to shut up. That's shut it. Shut up. Brother. Come on here. Baby, I started getting blessed when God gave me the spirit to mind my business. Yep. Mind my business and be quiet and let these people talk. Will let you people, do that? Let people learn. Watch this. Watch this. Let people learn from their mistakes from how they hurt you versus you trying to teach them. Come on. When you keep your mouth shut, you say, you know what, God? I know you got it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit back, God, and let you teach them. I'm going to yeah. keep moving forward. I'm hurt. I'm injured. It was painful to me. But I'm going to let you get them, God, because sometimes people can't learn because you were in the way of the lesson. Let them learn because you learn to be quiet. <laughs> and God, this is my valuable thing. When you hurt me, I've taken my hands off. He said, God, whatever lesson you need them to learn, I'm going to walk away. Yeah. I'm going to let you teach but them. I got to move on. Process. Heal yeah. my heart so when I see them again, that I have no, no, nothing in me, creating me a clean heart and yeah. renew a right. When someone and you're collecting debt, but not only collecting debt, and you're expecting Holy something Hushford. from them, you're expecting a payment. Bishop, that's our second point. Type that second point. You're expecting a payment from them. You have to tell yourself, God created me a clean heart. Yep. Renew a right spirit. The holy hush works. I love the holy hush. Renew a right spirit within me. Allow my heart not to turn from them and allow my heart to love them. I told man, when I tell you one thing, baby, let me tell you, when I love, I love. Yeah. And I mean it when I love you. And half of the time, I can't even take back my love for you. No. Nope. It's like I want to, but I can't. Especially my spiritual children. Oh my God, I can't. Yep. I love you in spite let of. Me, let me say this right quick because you know this is something that was powerful early because we say we got to stop collecting debt. But one of the greatest person we got to forgive is ourselves. That part, husband. Come and on. That, so, so when I say you got to give grace for other people to grow, but truly also we got to give grace for ourselves to grow. So what the, what am I saying? So I think Tony said earlier is that we're gonna move different. I'm gonna treat you. I'm not gonna treat you different. I'm gonna move different with you. And how you do that, right? Maybe I was immature in my expectation. Maybe I was immature in what I expected from you. And now remember this. This is my key to success with healing. 
and this is something that everybody will understand, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. Your happiness is your responsibility, not theirs. Come on. And if you showing up, and listen, and their happiness is their responsibility, not yours. So now when I move around you, I'm not moving around you to make you happy. I'm going to move around you at the rate that makes me happy. So this time, I'm not going to stay longer than I want to. This time, when I get uncomfortable, I'm going to leave. This time, when I'm around you, I'm going to limit to just a hug, a kiss, and a keep on moving. My happiness, the moment, listen to this here, the moment you give your happiness to them, I'm waiting for you to make me happy, you're getting in debt all over again. You're giving them a chance to all over again. When I move around you this time, I'm going to move around you at the rate that in the moment I'm uncomfortable, I know where my keys are. The rate I'm uncomfortable, I know where I'm not going to go. I don't show up anymore. Right now, I'm at the place of, of healing. I don't show up anymore to make anybody happy. I show up to make me happy, to make sure I can sleep at night with my decisions, make sure I can I can raise up in the morning and know I need to get a job. And if you don't like that, you can do two things. You can try to figure out how to get okay with it, or you can come around me and figure out how you can become happy with me. But I don't owe you my injury for our relationship. Come Jesus on. did that already. I don't have to do it. He, he died it for you. I don't have to hurt. I don't have to have him be, if I gotta show up and have and go through pain to be around you, that's 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 uh that's demonic. That's demonic. No. So so I'm telling you right now, if you're moving in rooms that you that you gotta limit yourself in, it's because you have unforgiveness. But if you're moving in rooms you're uncomfortable, now what I can do is just limit how long I'm in there. Right. That's I don't cool. have to be there. I don't show for you. And if I know I forgave you, I can still hug you, kiss you, and keep moving. Right. Come on, husband. Maybe me hugging and kissing you hurt you, but didn't hurt me. Mm-hmm. But if you can't hug and kiss somebody, that's not of God. But we should even grow to a point to where our third point, third point, is that we learn to release the dead. Least it should get to a point to where you can be in a room and it don't matter. And you can really hold a conversation with the person. And it's not fake. And it's not fake at all. And what you're, you're saying is, I don't expect you to correct what I let you hurt. Mm. I, I don't expect you to correct what you hurt me for. And it was a violation because some hurts come. If someone did something to you or whatever, maybe it was it was something that you didn't even open yourself up to. They came in and violate you without your permission. Yeah. Without you even knowing about it. But I can move around you and don't expect you to say, I'm sorry. I can move mm-hmm. around you and don't expect you to say, I, I, I'm in, in hurt. I could just move around you and you just be another person in the room. Yep. And it is okay. Yep. Last point, because we got to go. Last point, Bishop, is this. Not only are we collecting, we're learning, number one, and the power of forgiveness is learning, number one, to collect a debt. Uh, we collect debts when we are walking in unforgiveness. Number two, we're expecting of a, a payment. Number three, we're releasing a debt. And now you got to understand this. And I want you to type this in the screen. Is that after someone has caused unforgiveness in your life or you have caused unforgiveness, you always want to forgive you first before you forgive the other person. You always want to forgive you first before you forgive the other person because Here's the thing. If you don't take a look at the person in the mirror and realize what was the wrong that you caused, you're wrong because they're everybody think they right. There's a scripture in the Bible that says we always think we right. Period. Everybody going to think their story is the right story, no matter what. But you got to allow yourself to forgive yourself first. But last but not least, you got to be willing. If this person is going to be around you, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. We're getting ready for Christmas. If this is family members. If it's somebody that, that is in your circle is learning that. In order to have the power of forgiveness, I got to be willing to have a new beginning with you. Type that new beginning. I got to be willing to have a new beginning, a fresh start with you. Like we're going to start this over a new beginning. And there's nothing wrong with new beginnings with someone. That means that something has happened between you that has caused strife, that has called caused moments of failure, that has caused moments of of hurt, that has caused moments of man. They really did something that was dramatic, but you love them so much and God has connected y'all back together and you got to be willing to let go of everything they did. Forget pouring those things in the sea of forgetfulness, putting it in the sea of forgetfulness. 
Go ahead. Forget, forget the pain they caused you, but don't forget what they did to cause the pain. Yes. Because my new beginning going to be attached with new expectations. Yes. I'm not going to expect you not to hurt me. I'm not going to expect you to not talk about me. I'm not going to. Now when I move around you, I'm going to expect you to be exactly who you said you were. You are, period. But I'm going to move different. Mm-hmm. I'm going to still be a little bit of injured, but I'm going to move different. But I'm going to start moving. But the, longest we're, the longer we're together, that trust will be built again. As long as we're together, those moments, we'll create new memories together. Mm-hmm. As long as we're together, we'll be able to identify what this newness is because here's the thing if god forgave you you can forgive others and it's yeah. learning to do that you and i'm in a situation that. right now where I'm, I'm actually i'm making some decisions and and learning how to do that i'm learning how to okay maybe i had some bad expectations at first let me start this again with new expectations let me let you tell me who you are yeah let me let me let me let you tell me what you're gonna do and i'm yeah. only gonna hold you accountable to what you said not what i expect Right. I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna listen to this relationship this time. Yeah. I didn't listen last time. I came in with all my pre thoughts. Marriages. You walked in your marriage and you had your daddy expectations. You had your mom expectations. You never asked your husband, "Who are you? Mm-hmm. Who are yeah. we in this relationship?" You go in with with let people tell you who they are. Yeah. Let their actions. I always say this. There's a such thing as loud disrespect. Your actions <laughs> on how you do, but then there's a such thing as actions. Of your love. Now I just pay attention to your actions, not versus your words. And it's okay. Yeah. But my heart is open for you. I give you the opportunity. I knew you were gonna say that. You knew I was gonna say it, right? I know. (laughs) I'm gonna love you. Remember this. Type this or keep this on the canvas of your mind. And I say this in a bunch of my books. I'm gonna love you in spite of what you do to me, knowing that there's a possibility that you can hurt me again. Yes. I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna love you in spite of what you do to me, knowing that there's a possibility that you can hurt me again. When yep. you have a heart like that, your heart is open to whatever. whatever. Your heart is open to the lies. Your heart is open to the betrayal. Your heart is open to the failures. Your heart is open to the backbite. Your heart is open to it to the point to where I believe because of doing that, God protects my heart. He and he exposes what's not supposed to be connected to my heart. That's it. Come here. That's the power of it. Because God will expose who's ever not supposed to be around you or in your heart. I'm gonna love you in spite of what you do to me, knowing there's a possibility that you're gonna but hurt you me. You may hurt me. Okay. And if you don't do that, you setting yourself up never to have that's love. That part. You're setting yourself up to be a lonely person with cats. And you're setting yourself, yourself up not to deal with people. Yep. And what you say, lonely person with what? With cats. I can't get you <laughs> So we had a question. Here we go. This question How came do you up earlier. Handle forgiving someone and, and not, not wanting them to have access to you. They but don't they don't understand that. Listen, my wife taught me a long time ago is that it's okay. And this is what she taught me, and this is what I learned. It's okay to shift as long as you announce your shift, especially if people lean on you. But this is what I learned also is that it's also okay to explain yourself to people even if they don't understand it. I'm going to say again, it's okay to explain to people even if they don't understand it, especially if you love them. And just, it's okay to say, you know what, I'm learning. I'm learning how to move. Give me grace to grow. Be patient with me. If you do love me, don't put expectations on me that I'm not ready to commit to. So if you do love me, let give me a chance to move around you and let me grow at my own pace. And I promise you, I will grow at my own pace. And if you're okay with that, I get it. If you're not, I also get it. But I can't move with the injury. It's like a football player. I look like this here. I'm injured, but you can here put me on a football field. I know I'm walking, but my leg still hurt. Right. Let me get back on the football field at my pace, not at your pace. Right. I, I would add to that because uh, I'm a little different. Okay. This is why I feel like I'm pushing back, but I am. Uh, I'm a little different because I'm like this. If I announce my shift, depending on how great our relationship is, depending on how, how close we are, uh, if I announce my shift to you and you don't understand my announcement of my shift and I have had a conversation with you and then I have another conversation with you and you still don't understand, there's nothing that I can do to make you understand. But this I just like to say, announcing my shift. I agree 100% on that. And I just say it's the level of relationship. Yeah, it's the level of the relationship. 
elaborate on shit because in some situations I don't owe you nothing <laughs> at all. I I do. I probably owe you that. Hey, I'm about to change. You know, something about me is about to change, and I'm I'm gonna move different. I, yeah, but some it, people I owe that too. But those but that have been close to me and rock them, that's in covenant with me, I'm gonna explain to you that this was what I'm gonna do, and then when I find out you move different or your actions are different. Because of what I tried to explain to you, and you took it the way you wanted to take it, and then I explained to you again, uh, I can't because at this point you don't have no understanding why I'm shifting, and it's okay, and, and I what, gotta be okay with you being mad at me. And there's two covenants, right? There's a, and I'm learning this. There is a, there is a um, spiritual covenant you have with someone, and then there's a blood covenant you have with someone. That's good. Um, and that blood covenant is the hardest one. Mm -hmm. You can't break blood covenants. And 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 you you can shift. You gotta you gotta shift. You gotta adjust. You gotta shift. You gotta adjust. You gotta shift. You gotta adjust. And so as, so as you move forward, you know, understand what kind of covenant I got with you. But if it's just a, if you just we was just cool, and I let you know, and you weren't okay with it, that's on you. Yeah. But there's some people who are attached to you for a lifetime. I think TDJ says some people with you for a reason, season, and lifetime. Right. Them lifetime covenants. Yeah. That gummy, we balled and chained together. I can't get rid of you if I want to. Right, right, but right, you, right. You, you got to shut the door on the chain. You got to be on that side of the door. I'm on the side of the door. Even though we got to be connected. Me and my wife, we ain't going nowhere. I've hurt her. I've hurt her deeply. And 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 so she had to keep explaining to me over and over again. Man, I'm trying to feel, I'm trying to recover from this. It took her a year to recover from some of the that, um, pain I caused her in church. But she couldn't leave. You can't leave me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a covenant with you. I, I, I believe in this and type this in the screen and we're done. Is that I I believe in and I think some people get away from this, the power of covenants. You gotta understand the power of covenant. When there's a covenant broken and you make this covenant, that's within yourself, that's within someone else. There's a power in that. I don't got time to explain it, but yeah, that, I'm gonna just leave that at where Jesus it is. That's just no power in covenant. One takes Jesus said, life. No one takes his life. He laid he it laid down it. on his own cord, and he if he laid, laid it down, down, he can take it up again. Response to Lady T's comment about loving people and being vulnerable to being hurt again. Yep, yeah, that's it. So, this that's has been a good conversation. That's power. That's power in, I love that power and covenant. I'm telling you, it's something about covenant. That's a covenant in a marriage, covenant in a relationship, covenant in a spiritual connection. That's why we always say, man, no matter what, Bishop and Lady Wood are our spiritual covenant, uh, coverings, covering. And then, no matter what, me and Bishop, we married, man. It's 24 years this year. Children, it's a covenant. It's power in that. It's something about covenant. God blesses covenants. I don't yeah. know why, but he blesses covenants. The blood cover. Come on here. The blood covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Cup. That's it. That's that part it. today. And that's why we got to work on um, fixing it with family. Yeah. We got to work on fixing it with family. Family is covenant. That's your first covenant is yeah. with your family. Um, so family we got to run and fix it. So as we go into this this new season, don't go into 2025 with the debt. We know for a fact we put debt on folks that they didn't deserve to have. Right. Stop telling people who you want them to be. Just learn who they are and expect it. I want you to think about everyone around you right now, everyone in your, your circle, and think about the expectation you put on them. And then think about it. What if you just let them be the best version of them? Jesus didn't tell Judas, stop being Judas. He cool. just used Judas for his advantage. He didn't tell Peter, stop being Peter. He didn't put expectation on none of his disciples. That's good, sir. He let them be the best version of them. That's good. And, and, and use them at their greatest and to help him become his best. Come on. Stop trying to make the circle be you. That's imposter syndrome. You're making them imposters. That's narcissism. Your imposters. The narcissism. Yeah. I want everyone to stop it right now and say, okay, God, I want you to take a census of your children. And ask, are you making your children be what they're not? Or are you allowing them to be who they are? And you're just trying to teach them the way to go, but let them grow. Are you trying to control your husband? Are you letting your husband be the greatest? Or are you telling him the man he should be? Or are you letting him become the man he is? Are you letting your wife, your wife grow? Or are you telling your wife who she should be? Come on. Your friends, your circle, churches, pastors, whoever it is. Look at us, your circle. Look at Even the, your employees. Come here. Your employees. Your employees. People. The people you spend more than five, spend at least two days with a week. The people you spend at least two days with a week and, and throughout the day, how are you imposturing them or how are you 
allowing them to develop. Yeah. And if you're telling them to be, be who they are and they keep hurting you, it's because you're telling them what you want them to be instead of letting them be what God told them to be. So on, that's man. my that's my thing. You know, utilize people at their advantage, not tell them who they are and then let them hurt you because they couldn't show up at your rate. Right. And I would say in closing is that, you know, the power of forgiveness is such a freedom. Ooh, type that. When you when you walk in forgiveness, it's such a freedom. Um, and it makes it so much easier for you to walk in a room because you didn't say anything about that person. You didn't drag their name in the mud. Uh, you kept what happened between you and them, between you and them, besides your counselor or your spiritual covering. The power in forgiveness is so such a freedom when you learn to keep your mouth closed and let God do it. The yeah. power in forgiveness is such a freedom when you know God Whatever I did wrong, let me make it right. Because freedom, the power of freedom is also conviction and converting. Mm. Yes. Conviction and converting. You will become convicted and then you will become converted. Because now you're going to be convicted enough to go to that person and say, I wronged you. Yeah. Now you're walking freedom. That's freedom. That's freedom. To say, I messed up. That's freedom. Yeah. I've had to do it with my sisters, with my family. I've had to do it with church members. Man, that's freedom to walk in that. So walk in freedom, walk in forgiveness, and be able to eat your turkey in, in Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know about it throwing no dressing. Okay. Be able and to I'm gonna say that. one last thing for me to say is that my wife said earlier about don't tell go to a therapist. I say this here as after that is that maybe you can't make anybody go to therapy, but maybe it's time for you to go. That part. You need Jesus in therapy. Type that. Yeah. You need Jesus and therapy. And if it's something that you are still holding on and it is bounding you and it is keeping you, we speak over you right now in the name of Jesus, that you will be able to release it into a, in a room that will yeah. be safe for you. That it will, I buy shit. Oh God, that will be safe for you. Yeah. A room that will be able to allow you to get the freedom that you need. We decree and declare over everything that you do for the rest of this year, that you would be able to walk in freedom but you need a place to release yes, yes. so that you can heal for real. So yes, I decree and declare to that person that's listening to this, that if you are still walking in unforgiveness and life has hit you like a bag of bricks and you feel like that you are in a corner and you are by yourself, we come to tell you, number one, you are not alone. We also come to tell you the importance of getting you a spiritual therapist a licensed therapist. If not, get you a, a spiritual covering, someone that can talk to you and speak life into you. But we go always encourage therapy. So we we speak in the name of Jesus that this live that we did today, that someone's life will be set free and they would start the journey of walking in freedom and forgiveness. That's it. And Jesus say, we thank you. Y'all have a great day. Thank y'all for rocking out. Anything, Bishop, you going to say something? I'm so sorry. No, no, I'm trying to find out what time it is. I, I, I'm okay. All right. That. Love y'all. Y'all have a great day. Thank y'all for rocking out. If you don't remember anything else, join us every first Monday of the month as we come with Coffee and Conversation here. You can always rock out with us, watch old replays, different things that we've discussed. Until then, if you don't remember anything else, remember that you are a product of God's grace and mercy. When you see yourself through God's eyes, and not people. Have an amazing week. Speak over your week. Speak life. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.